what really drew me was the, you know, I'd be, been a journalist in, uh, in Europe um, during the time of the, the Cold War and seen the Russians in action in, in Germany, which, um, you know, were not very attractive. I mean, they're such brutal occupiers. And then, and then later in Hungary, where it was the aftermath of the Russian, when they reinvaded re and took over the whole country. And, um, so I was very interested. Uh, I was appalled, really, to, to, to um, you know, when the Russians invaded Hungary, um, Afghanistan. One reason or another, I thought I should go and find out what was happening, because very little news was coming out of Afghanistan. And not many people really understood or knew uh, what was happening, what the Russians, how they were behaving, and how the um, Mujahideen were getting on. I mean, you know, were they successful? Um, could they possibly hold out against the Red Army? I mean, it was David and Goliath. You know, it was an un, un, very unequal war. The only way to find out was to go there. So we went there, but you had to walk or ride a horse because you couldn't go through official channels because that was Russian controlled and they would only allow in Western journalists who were on their side and known to be on their side. And uh, so you had to go with the Mujahideen and that meant going across country as I say, on horseback or walking. And it took us 12 days to walk in to see Masood, this famous, he became famous guerrilla commander up in the northeast beyond, in the Panjshir Valley, who later became very famous and then was assassinated by the Al-Qaeda, as you know, just before 9-11. So we went to find him and we did find him. And um, he did actually say to me on one occasion, um, um, is there anything you can do for this chap who's lost a leg on a Russian, by one of his commanders who blown off a foot trying to, um, trying to uh, extr extricate uh, Russian mines, trying to dig up Russian mines, and slipped, I think, and blew off his foot. And he said, is there anything you could do for him? And that sort of started the charitable impulse, and I ended up starting a charity, and uh, all my wife and I together decided to start a charity, look after disabled Afghans. That's kept me going back, really, you know, year after year, and my wife. Was, and so after this five days here at the Literature Festival, we'll be going to Afghanistan to see what's happening. So it's certainly keeping you very busy in the meantime, though. I want to ask specifically about your latest book, yes. The War Against the Taliban, Where It All Went Wrong, uh, essentially looking at the biggest mistakes that the West made uh, following the 9-11 attacks. And you say it really centers around America's obsession with invading Iraq. Yes, I, I think there are, you could use three words to sum up why it all went wrong in Afghanistan, in my view. And one is uh, um, Bush. President Bush's invasion of Iraq, I think, is a very big factor. Um, and the second one is corruption in Afghanistan, which I think you could say is eaten out, eaten through the whole sort of system. And thirdly is Pakistan. So Bush, corruption and Pakistan. Pakistan, because of the, a um, uh, lot of people feel uh, a very sort of short-sighted, uh, policy of the, particularly the, uh, the Pakistani army and the, the military intelligence unit, the ISI, who want to see a government in Kabul which is in their, you know, at their beck and call, more or less. A sort of pliant vassal state is what the Pakistanis want. And um, this has bedeviled the whole thing. And so, I think the war was unwinnable with Pakistan backing the Taliban and giving them safe havens and all that. So I think this is a very big factor in why the war has gone in effect. Now everybody says the war has gone badly and, you know, and the war has more or less been lost and the Americans are leaving, I mean, and leaving who knows what sort of mess behind. Not only the Americans, of course, the whole of NATO, but I mean the Americans are the key part of NATO, as you know. So. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen now, and uh, uh, will the Taliban come back? Um, uh, I think a lot of people in Afghanistan don't want the Taliban to come back uh, because of how they behaved before, partly, and because of the things that have happened, and the way they've conducted the war, and the fact that Pakistan is still supporting them, um, although it claims not to, of course. 
And uh, as I say, nobody knows what's going to happen. So what do you see then for the future of Afghanistan? You, you've called it certainly an example of how not to go to war when you look at Iraq and Afghanistan. But where do you think we go from here? Is a settlement uh, agreement between India and Pakistan on the cards anytime soon? And, and do you feel there'll be a resurgence uh, from the Taliban? One hopes that uh, the Pakistanis will see sense um, that um, they will think it's in their best interest for a peaceful uh, Afghanistan and a, after all they are neighbors and um, if they don't see that if they keep urging the Taliban to take over by a force if necessary I think that I think there'll be a civil war if the Taliban play their cards skillfully and say yes okay we're prepared to be part of a coalition government and part of the government under perhaps a non-Taliban leader, I don't know who that will be, somebody that Karzai will no doubt uh, um, try and foist on the country, um, uh, then things could be different. So, we, you know, we could then, who knows what might happen. It's, it's possible that, um, uh, that, that, that there might be some sort of peaceful resolution. And I think we ought to do, the West should do everything it can to promote such, a, such an outcome.